Hey everybody, David from Flash by V Cycle Nut here. I wanted to make a video, help people out to understand dyno runs and what they are. So instead of looking at my ugly mug during it, I figured we could look at some pictures of some cool bikes. First thing is, is what is a dyno run? I did a whole video on uh, the down low on dyno runs. You can search through my stuff and find it. But basically we strap a, the motorcycle to a machine and we spin this heavy drum and we accelerate all the way through a gear or we can do the all gears and it puts up these curves and then they represent horsepower and torque. So what are torque and what is horsepower? These are the forces that are propelling the motorcycle forward. And you'll hear all kinds of people talk about torque is what drives you off at low RPMs and horsepower is what at high RPMs. And that's not completely wrong, but really truly torque is a rotational force. Horsepower is a straight line force. I've always thought it's kind of strange that we use a dyno that spins a drum in a rotation to give us a horsepower number. If we have a tack hookup, we can also get a torque number, and that's because they are related to each other. And if, at, on a graph, if the scales are set the same for horsepower and torque, the lines will always intersect at 5,200 and 52 RPMs. If the lines don't, that means something's funny's going on. You also can see sometimes when people will post, not always that it means something fishy's up, but if you see them post the horsepower on one chart, and torque on another. It's usually to make it look exaggeration of the gains by changing the scales on them, each of them. I kind of think of them about just two different ways to look at kind of the same thing. Is my motorcycle going to be faster or slower? And if I compare just two torque curves to each other, if one has a higher torque at a given same RPM, that motorcycle is going to be faster with the most torque. Just like at the same RPM, if a bike has more horsepower, it's going to be faster at that. So what we get as an output from the dyno is these graphs or these curves, and they have scales on them on the left. And if we have a torque curve on the right, and you'll see on the left, it'll say horsepower. On the right, it'll say foot pounds, if that's because that's well, at least all the ones I do, because that's what I measure in. And then across the bottom will be RPMs or miles per hour. So as the bike spins up, the RPMs go up, and it's measuring how much horsepower it's making at that given RPM. If we have the tack hookup, it does the formula, and it puts up a torque graph to match. So we can look at any RPM and look at how much horsepower and torque it's making at that given RPM. So most people, like I said, when we're looking at dyno curves, it's to try to determine if the motorcycle got faster or slower. And people will focus on the peak number, which I'm not saying it's not important, but really area under the curve is most important. You want to, you know, we want raises everywhere. We want gains everywhere. But that area under the curve, the higher the curve is across the sweep, the faster the motorcycle is going to be. We can have poorly shaped curves with dips and divots. We can have flat curves. So all these things are important when evacuating a dyno run. So the first run that we're going to really actually take a look at is the my GSX-8. And you can see I have a cursor on there where it puts a line up so that we can use this one or I use this when I'm looking at a dyno run so I can look at a specific point and compare the numbers. And I have it, it's actually, if we look at the bottom where the cursor is, it'll say 5,213 RPMs. But you can see the number and the, the torque number and the horsepower number are the same so we know that the, this is a legit curve. If you look on the left, you'll see numbers going up from 0 to 90. And you just to the left that, you'll see it says power horsepower. On the right, we see 0 to 90 and we see torque and foot pounds. So this is our scale. So if the line is at where it's equal to 40, that's 40 horsepower if it's on the left. And same thing if it's on the right, it's 40 foot-pounds of torque. I always hook up my tack lead. So across the bottom, we have RPMs. You can also see that it gives us a line with the information for max power and max torque and which RPM they are at. So that's, a, you know, more important data, right? So again, everybody always tends to focus on that number, but really... When you're comparing two runs, I, like I said, I like to look at area under the curve. But let's just take a look at what this measurement told us. So let's look at 6,000 RPM. So if we go across the bottom axis out to 6, and we run that line straight up, the first flat curve, the flatter looking curve, or that's lower past the 5252, that's our torque curve. And at 6,000 RPMs, we're right about 64, 64 put down to torque. And if we keep going to the line that extends above the torque curve at 52.52, well, then we see they're right around 70 horsepower at that same 6,000 RPMs. Because of how the horsepower and torque are related to each other with that 52.52 RPMs, anything below that 52.52, the torque is greater than the horsepower, and anything above 52.52, the horsepower is greater than the torque. And basically it takes a really strong horsepower curve that's climbing really fast or really pretty much at a 45 degree angle 
after that 52 52 to keep our torque curve flat you can see as where as the rpms climb and the horsepower curve kind of dips and flattens off a little bit our torque curve is actually going down so we're not making as much torque but we're making more horsepower and again that's because of how they're related and that formula that doesn't mean that that's necessarily horrible it's just that you really need to continue to make more and more and more horsepower to really have a flat torque curve Next item we're going to look at is from a 21 MT09. Again, you can see at the 5252, the numbers cross. And really, the shapes of these curves don't look that much different, but this bike's making 118 horsepower and 71 foot pounds of torque. So, quite a bit more. And that's because if we look at the scales on the left and right now, they go up to 120 is the last line we have. Again, it's still RPMs across the bottom. We can see this bike revs out a little higher. We're at red lines at about 10.6. Um, and you know, the shapes of the curves, like I'm saying, aren't too, too different because again, the power curve kind of flaw, f flattens out on the top, which means the torque is going to drop off at the bottom. Again, it's not horrible. It's just the way the shape of the torque curve and the horsepower curve go. So th this is, uh, a known to be a torquey bike and it is, um, just because it falls off on the end, you, you wouldn't say it's not torquey. It's just that it doesn't keep climbing up in power as quick as it needs to, to keep, keep that torque curve flat. Next one we're going to look at is the ZX4RR, and if you just look at the shape of the curves, you'd think this thing's a torque monster, but then when you look at the scales and it's only going up to 70, and you realize this thing's only making 27 foot-pounds of torque, which is uh, less than half of what that MT-09 was making it before it, it's just because this thing's a screamer and the, R and the horsepower keeps climbing up at that 45-degree angle, it gives us more of a flat torque curve. So this is actually a much easier bike to ride than you would think as far as the racetrack, because it gets about the same drive off the corners down to about you can see we get a nice little step up at about 9,000 rpm so as long as i keep the bike above 9,000 rpms coming off the corner it runs really good this is a nice shape curve um, this is after tuning and stuff that's a final flash but i don't remember i think this was a stock exhaust i'm not 100 percent positive but again scales are really important last one we're going to look at solo is the my h2sx which the shape of the curve the curve the dyna run looks almost identical when looking at that zx4r then you look at the scales and you realize this thing's making almost 110 foot pounds of torque and 250 horsepower again it just has that nice 45 degree climb with the horsepower so it keeps a nice flat torque curve pretty impressive so if we look at this thing at 10,000 rpms it's making about 110 foot pounds of torque and we can see if you look at it from 7,000 RPMs all the way to 12, almost 13,000 RPMs, it's making more than 100 foot-pounds of torque that whole entire time. So, yeah, this thing is a monster to ride, uh, really a ton of fun, uh, and that torque curve is just just amazing. So, now let's look at a couple things. So, I was talking about area under the curve. So, let's look at a dyno run where, I'm, where I can show you that. Let's look at a couple MT-07 runs compared to each other. So, like I said, most people will focus on the peak number. And if we look down at the bottom, we gained uh, about three horsepower between the runs and a couple few foot-pounds of torque. But if you look at the two curves and how much area that the blue curve is over the red curve, it's a lot more significant than just three horsepower. It sounds like not much. We can see I put the cursor at about 7,400 RPMs, and it's about a what's that eight horsepower seven horsepower there a difference there um and it's holding that for for quite a bit so even though it's only about a three horsepower difference this blue bike is going to have significant more drive off a corner or just be a faster through the gears um than than the red motorcycle and this is again what i'm talking about area under curve the last set of dyno charts we're going to look at are a couple of 600s and if we just looked at the peak number, we would see that the red 600s making 115 horsepower and the blue 600s only making 111. And we would say, oh, yeah, well, that red, the red bike should be faster, right? But again, if you look at the area under the curve, the red, the red bike doesn't pass the blue bike in horsepower wise till about 12,400 RPMs. So if you can keep that little red bike in that little area where it's above the blue, well then, sure, it would be faster, but that's going to be literally impossible because it, it starts to fall off. So the blue bike in 99.9% .9 situations is going to be a faster bike. And generally, once something gets a good uh, an acceleration advantage, it takes a lot more than what that little that that red bike has on top to start. First, you got to make up for it. Then you actually turn around and turn it around and actually catch the other bike. 
So again, this is another good illustration of area under curve and why that's way more important than just looking at a peak number. You also notice up on the right hand top right hand corner of it, you got CF, which stands for correction factor. And what the correction factor does is it compensates or changes the runs so that to a like condition. Because every time I run the dyno, it's a little bit different in temperature, it's a little bit different in humidity, and it's not huge on naturally aspirated bikes, but it does make a difference. So it'd be impossible to compare two different runs done on two different days. Um, so the correction factor makes that a little better. It, it doesn't make it perfect, but it makes it a little better. Smoothing, we always have set to five. That makes the lines as smooth as possible because if you if I lower that smoothing level, you get a bunch of jagged edges on the run, and that'll make those peak numbers seem artificially high. It would pop up to like 117, but it's just a spike up on, on it, and it's not really real. So uh, I hope you guys like the video, and I hope it helps some people with understanding dyno runs. Drop some comments and questions if you got any about a run or any comments, anything I didn't talk about. Uh, thanks, guys, for watching. Remember, hit that subscribe and like button for more motorcycle-related content.